Hi friends and fellow artists, and anyone who's got no idea how they found themselves here. In this mini course, I'm gonna be showing you how to draw and sketch animals. Now, over the years of teaching people how to draw, I would say one of the most common elements that people struggle with is proportion. And of course, if you wanna draw animals, or at least if you wanna draw them well, you've got to be able to draw them in proportion. So how do you avoid a, a head that's too big or too small, or legs that are too long or too short? And how do you create that believable shape so that the animals you draw don't look like cartoons. Well, I'm gonna be showing you all of that in the next three tutorials, starting with this one. Now, I think that animals are the perfect subject matter for learning how to draw and observe, because on the one hand, they do force you to observe things like proportion and shape, the placement of facial features reasonably well. There's a lot less leeway than there is for, say, landscapes or simple still life. But then on the other hand, they're a lot more forgiving than, say, human figure drawing and certainly portrait drawing. So what we're going to start with in this lesson is three simple sketches where we'll be focusing more on the outline. It's often called the laying. And we're going to focus on that more than the shading side of things. And then in part two of this series, in the next video, we're going to be doing a horse portrait with more of an emphasis then on some shading, some quick and sketchy shading. And then in part three, we'll be drawing a lion. And again, focusing a little bit more on the shading side of things and this time making our marks and our shading a little bit more refined compared to that horse portrait. Now, just a friendly reminder, this course is obviously designed for you to follow along. I know I say this a lot before my videos, but it's true. You're only gonna get better with a pencil in your hand and a piece of paper following the lesson. By the end of this series, I want you to see a significant improvement in your drawing and observational skills. And I want you to be able to draw pretty much any animal that you like in any pose because if you can do that, then you can draw automatically draw all kinds of other subject matter as well. Lastly, if you're wondering why halfway through this video, I appear to be 10 years younger compared to this introduction, well, I've been wondering the same thing as well because it was only filmed five years ago. Anyway, such is life. Enjoy this series. Please, please do try and follow along. And then when you've done this one, come and join me in part two. first quick sketch then is of this gazelle and this is a classic side on pose so any kind of four-legged animal you know your horse dog a big cat a deer that's in this sort of pose is relatively difficult to get the proportions right you've got to get the length relative to the height of the body correct you've got to get the length of the legs correct the width of the legs uh, and then also you know the size and the height of the head the technique that I'm going to use to start this one off is one called boxing. If you've seen the Drawing Essentials course, you'll have seen a lesson on that particular technique. I'm going to revisit it here in the context of this uh, gazelle. Now, I'm going to actually start drawing on top of the reference photograph and then transfer those shapes over onto my drawing paper. And that's so that you can see the thought processes that I'm going through. You're not always going to have to draw shapes on top of your reference photograph and then onto your drawing paper, you will get to a point where you're just mentally seeing these shapes, you're just visualizing them, and you're able to use that visual information to create the correct proportions. But you can only really get to that stage by first drawing things out, literally drawing things out onto, on your reference photograph and then onto your paper. That's how I would recommend that you start. As you get better and more confident with these processes, you can drop that and just start seeing it in your mind's eye. Okay, so what boxing allows me to do is get an overall proportion of the height relative to the width. So you can see the size of this gazelle here, relatively small, I've printed it out quite small. So I wanna draw bigger, but again, maintaining those proportions. So what I can do is draw a box. And again, I might just mentally see this. If I was doing it for myself, I'm just mentally seeing a box around the outer edges. I'm gonna to just uh, touch the hind quarters there so I'm gonna use this point here just to draw this box in. And then we'll take it to the top of the back. So that box just there, that's the box that I'm visualizing when I come to draw those proportions in on my paper. And it doesn't matter what size that box is, as long as it, the height and width are the same proportion to each other relative to one another. So the first thing I'll do is just try and draw that box out roughly the same shape just by eye. So I'm just looking, is it a long and tall and thin box or is it a short but wider box? Now from here, there's a very simple check that I can make to see whether the width is the correct proportion to the height. And we don't want to be getting any rulers out. You know, we don't need to measure the width of this and then divide it into the width of that and then try and translate that to ours. 
All you simply do is look at the angle from one corner to another. So either from this corner to this corner or this one to this one. And as long as you maintain that angle, your proportions, whatever size box you've drawn on there, whatever size the rectangle is, is going to be correct. So the angle is, looks like it's not too far off. So let's just draw my angle in first, I'm trying to get from corner to corner. Lay the pencil down and lay it on there. So I've just got lucky. I've managed to draw this first time so that the width is correct relative to the height. That's not always going to happen. It's certainly not going to happen if this is the first time you're using this technique. So please do at this stage erase your rectangle or the sides of, your, of the rectangle and adjust it so that this angle is correct. So the next step, I want to have a look at the size, the overall size of the head relative to the rectangle that I've put down. So I want to look for the height of the head and I can make a guess, you know, I could say it's going to be somewhere around there. I look at the size of this rectangle and I just make an adjustment that mine is so much bigger so therefore the head is going to be that much bigger. I can make that judgment but I want to check that it's correct. So what I can look for is an angle between this point and the top of the head. So again, you can just lay your pencil down if you need to. And again, it looks like I've got lucky but you know I've been doing this for a while so I can take an angle there and roughly that is going to be the top of the head. For the width of the head you could do the same again so you could make that into a, a rectangle and look for the angle you know and can you maintain the same angle so it's going to be something roughly along those lines or if you wanted to choose a slightly different method you could say the head is around about a quarter of the length of the body. So one measure, two, three, four, four equal measures, one, that's about halfway, two, three, four. And this is again is the thing with animals, you don't have to be deadly accurate, you've just got to be reasonably accurate. Now the next thing that is important, really important with an animal study and a pose of this nature, is to look at the length of the legs. So what I can do is just mark where the bottom of the torso ends, and I can just see, I'm going to take this through the top of the rectangle here, just so you can see it on the white of the paper. And then that mark is there, and then the bottom is here. You can see that this distance is slightly greater than this distance, so it's slightly above halfway. So again, I'm just going to make an approximation of where that is. So I would say that's roughly about right there. Maybe needs to be a little bit higher, could be a little bit lower. Yes, I could look at the angle again, but we want to start building in some speed into our sketches and you know when you've got these other reference points to go from making a best guess here is going to be good enough. Now obviously that looks nothing like a gazelle and you might think you know the paper's going to start getting really really messy if we're putting all of these construction lines in before we actually start putting any shapes in. But again I go back to what I said earlier I'm drawing this out now so you can see the process the thought process that I go through in reality, what I probably would have done is just made a mark for the width, maybe a mark for the bottom there, for the top of the head, and maybe a mark for the length of the legs. But visually, this is what I'm seeing in my mind's eye. When you follow along with this as an exercise, draw it out as I've drawn it here. That's going to help consolidate this technique so that you remember it going forward. Now from here, I want to start looking at overall basic shapes. So I'm going to look at a shape for the head. And the first thing I want to do is just look at the angle, the way that the head is tilted, or in this case, the way that the head is turned. And I can take a line through the nose, through the, the two horns there, just to get an approximate angle for the gazelle's head. And then all I'm going to do is draw a very simple oval, just to represent where that shape would be. I'm just looking at how the bottom of the oval breaks into the bottom of this line here, so it breaks below this line, I should say. So I'm just looking at that for now. And then I can also see this a sphere shape here. What that does by putting it in is it allows me to see the distance on this side and the distance on this side. So I'm looking at this sphere shape, and I can see that there's roughly about the same amount of distance on this side as this side. Well, that's not what I've got here, so I need to adjust that maybe make it slightly larger, move it over slightly to the right. Something more like that. And now at this stage, I feel a lot more confident being able to put some of the contour lines in. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to have a look at this angle here. And what I can look at is 
I can start to look and visualize this negative space. So how does this negative space compare to what's on my reference? So the top of the back comes down and then again, I've got a nice bit of negative space here. So I can look at the shape of that. And then the hindquarters come down and I'm just looking at this reference point that I've got coming across here. That's where the leg breaks out. I'm just looking at the angle. So I'm not gonna go into the, the legs just yet. I'm gonna come back onto those in a second. So now I'm just looking at this as a, a triangle shape, uh, a triangle with the end cut off. And then we've got the bottom of the stomach there and it goes into, it needs to be a bit larger, that sphere. And then we've got this other curved shape at the front there. Into this angle here, look at that little bit of negative space, that little bit of triangular negative space there. We've got this relatively straight edge for the front of the neck. And then there's a piece, there's a small triangular piece just jutting out there. Okay, and now let's go into the legs. So what I find really useful when drawing uh, legs, whether it's a, an animal or a person, same for arms, is to look at the midpoint or the knee joint, elbow joint, that kind of thing. So I'm just gonna look at the knee joints here and I just wanna notice how the back leg, the knee joint is lower than this front leg. And the two knee joints of the front legs are lower again than the hind legs. And I can mark a point of where that is. So our distance here, the, these knee joints are slightly above halfway. You can see that the distance there is greater than that distance. So if this is our distance here. The knee joints for the front legs are gonna be around that level and the back knee joints are gonna be somewhere around that level. Maybe a little bit higher because this needs to be, these need to be lower. So what that does is it allows me to see how far this angle comes down. I can see this knee joint is here and I can see this leg is almost vertical. And I'm just gonna put a hoof in for now as a circle. And then that makes it very easy to start looking at the rest of the leg. So that probably needs to be a little bit thicker. And by the way, can you see how I'm holding the pencil? So for all of this sketch, I'm holding it right at the end. There's none of this holding it at the point. It's gonna make it very, very difficult for you to get these broad sweeping strokes. So for the next hind leg, look at this nice piece of negative space between it. If you focus more on that negative space than on the positive shape of the leg, so this is what I'm looking at here. I'm trying to recreate that shape. I'm not looking at this line here and then to this side of the leg. I'm not trying to recreate that. I'm trying to recreate that shape. That's an abstract shape. That's easier for you to judge because your brain isn't going to get in the way and start making assumptions about it's a leg so it should look like this. That's when you start to make things up. Okay, and I can see that that hoof there is pretty much on the same line as this one. I'm looking at this shape in here. Does it look like it's the same proportions? I'm not worrying about any contours at this stage. I'm just putting it in as straight lines, really basic shapes. Okay, for the front legs, what I want to do for this first front leg is just take a plumb line through the, uh, the gazelle's back. Whereabouts does the plumb line break into the gazelle's back? So you can see it's just to the side of the head, just to the left of the head as we're looking at it. So if I draw a plumb line down, that's gonna give me this first front leg around about here. And then it gives me this negative space here, which I can make a judgment. Does that look about right compared to this one? So I'm happy with that. Again, I know where the knee joints are, so I can take the top of the leg down to the knee joint there. And then I can see how this leg stays relatively straight. It's got a little bit of a bend into it. There's a bit of a bend at the bottom there. And the hoof is slightly lower down, a little bit further forward than that. So slightly lower down and a bit further forward than these. We've got the next one I can put in. And again, looking at that negative space. So looking at this space here. Knee joint on about the same sort of line. Looking at how that space changes. Okay, 
Okay, and then let's just put the tail in. It's just going to help to give it a bit of balance. And then we come on to the head. So I'm just going to erase just some of the lines around that so you can just see it a little bit more clearly, so I can see it a bit more clearly. Now the way that I'm going to approach this is again to look at a couple of basic shapes. So I'm going to look at a sphere for the front, for the muzzle, and then a sphere for the top of the head. And I'm just going to notice how that is more of a flattened sphere, that is more of a, a traditional sphere. So let's put that first one in. Much easier to judge what I think the size should be from a sphere. I can look at the distance between the two. I know that the top of the head is here, so my flattened sphere has got to start somewhere there. And that's going to make it very easy then to put the contours in between those two spheres, the contour lines. So I just need to put in the ears and the horns now, and then we can tidy things up a little bit and start looking at more precise contours. So let's put one horn in. Now you can just guess the height of these, or you can use one of the techniques that we've already looked at, and you can take an angle from here to here. So you can say the angle from there to there is that, so that's roughly about right. So again, you can just look at the negative space between the two, and then we've got the ears. So again, just looking at the negative space between the two shapes, so much easier. Now I appreciate that looks really messy, what I would suggest that you do now is to get a kneaded eraser if you've got one of those and just start to erase these marks back. Get rid of any of those that you don't need. Maybe, you know, the, the shading that I've put in between the legs for the negative space. But you can erase all of them quite a lot and you'll still see them. They'll still be there so you won't lose the marks entirely. You'll still be able to work from them. Just get rid of some of those construction lines. And rather than me just erasing everything back, I'm going to keep most of it there. And then I'm going to get a 7-8B pencil, a really, really um, dark pencil. This is almost like a, a carbon pencil. And let's go over and start tidying up the contours, particularly around the head. So let's start there. So I've already got these shapes in. It makes it much easier now for me to see the angles. So I'm looking at that angle there. The angle of the nose area, this angle here. And how that goes into this curved shape at the bottom. Really, really simple for me to do. And I can look at the width of the neck. So I can look at this shape here, this uh, marking. That gives me the, the width of the nose there. I can put the nose in, which is just a very, very simple shape, almost like an arrow, a flattened arrow. A line for the mouth. Let's get the position of the eye. So the eye is just, all you're looking to do is just put it in. Again, look at those angles. Don't look at curves. Try and create straight lines. So I've got, a, let me just draw that out bigger for you. So I've got an angle there, an angle there, an angle. And then I did add a bit of a curved edge. So that's the shape that I'm looking for. Instead of trying to draw this neatly curved eye, what you think an eye might look like, just looking at those angles. This eye is just a bit of tone some eyelashes there. We've got some markings down the back which we'll come on and put those in just with a little bit of shading in a moment. Let's get the ear in. Okay now as I come down into the legs I can just start paying a little bit more attention to any subtle uh, changes in the curvature of the line just so I can get the contours more correct. But, you know, if you don't get the, those correct, if you don't get the contours correct, which is what everybody focuses on, getting those really nice, neat contour lines, it's not really going to matter too much. You can have perfectly contoured lines, but if it's out of proportion, that is all the viewer will see. If it's in proportion, but you've got lines that maybe are a little bit too straight or curved slightly in the wrong place, it's not really going to matter if your proportions are correct. So there's our gazelle. Hopefully it's in reasonable proportion. It looks like a gazelle. It looks believable. And that stage of the drawing is definitely the most difficult. That layout, getting the proportions correct. I'm going to add a little bit of shading now. If you want to spend more time on the shading, what you'll find is that you've got a lot more enthusiasm for that when you've got a drawing that looks really uh, well proportioned to begin with. So I'm going to stick with this 7B pencil. I'm just going to keep to the 7B, keep it really nice and loose. 
and I'm just going to point out a few of the things that I'm looking for, but we'll speed a lot of this up. So I, I am going to look for any shadows that I can see, so any definite shadows, get them in nice and strongly, so we can create some solidity, some form to the, to the animal. So there's a nice shadow here. Put some shadow around the head there and around the eyes and then put the horns in quite strongly as well. There's a couple of highlights on there that you might want to reserve. And then for the markings, you can just maybe give yourself a rough indication of how they go. So there we go, there is our very rough and ready sketch of a gazelle. Hopefully you can see that using this approach, using these techniques, it's actually quite simple to get the overall proportions and the shape correct of what is otherwise quite a difficult pose and quite potentially quite a difficult animal to draw. So do have a go with this one before you move on to the next one. Spend a little bit more time on the shading if you want to, but the most important thing is that you get the outline, the layout correct so that you're happy with it. So once you've done that one, Come back and join me and we'll move on to the next study. The next animal is this bird of prey. And for this one, I'm gonna take a slightly different approach. So instead of putting a box or an envelope around the animal, I'm gonna to stick to just big basic shapes. Now this isn't a better technique, it's not a preferred technique for this pose or this animal. It's just a different technique and it's one that you can add to your repertoire. Now if you've been studying art or learning how to draw for any length of time, you've almost certainly come across this idea of breaking things down into these big basic shapes. And it's almost so common, so overused, that it's become a bit of a cliche that people disregard. But somebody said to me recently, when you hear a cliche, you should probably sit up and take notice. Cliches stand the test of time and become cliches because they're true. And this technique of breaking things down into big basic shapes isn't just for beginners, it's for artists of every level and even professional artists use this technique as one of their go-to approaches to drawing things such as animals, figures, you know, anything that's got any kind of complexity to it. So there are no right and wrong shapes to look for. My personal preference is to stick to ovals and spheres. It's kind of a consistency there and I find those easy to measure uh, against each other. So let me show you what I mean. For the head, I can see that that is a very definite oval. Now for the body, you could say, or you might see that as a rectangle, but I prefer to see everything within any subject as an oval or a sphere. And the reason for that is that I find the same shape easier to compare to one another. So I've got an oval there for the head, and I've got this oval here for the bulk of the body. So let's put those in on our drawing paper. And again, we want to go bigger than the reference subject because this is all about being able to you know, maintain those proportions at whatever size that you draw. Now, before I put this oval in and this one, what I do want to do is imagine an axis running through the middle of each oval because these axes really determine the overall pose, the gesture. Now, just a quick tip here. It is quite common when you put these initial marks down to want to put them in the middle of your drawing paper. But just have a look at your subject and where the bulk of it is. So if we put these two angles down in the middle, the bulk of the subject is to the left, it's probably gonna go off the edge of the paper. So you need to put these angles towards the right hand side. You know, there's not a lot in front that is gonna fall off this side of the paper. So I'm gonna put this one in first and I'm just gonna do my best to gauge that. Let's get that somewhere near the front. And then I want to put this angle in. So again, let's just make a best guess at that. And then when they're down, that's when you can check. So just do a quick check. My angle there is a little bit too flat. And see this one, that one's okay. This one needs to be a bit steeper. So let's just adjust that. Okay, and now I can put my oval in. And the size of oval that I put in initially for that first shape, it doesn't matter other than it's got to fit on the page. You've got to think about the whole drawing fitting on the page. So let's put that first oval in for the head. Okay, 
Now the next oval that I put in for the body, I've just got to think about what is the size relative to that first one. And it's just a judgment call, but you'll surprise yourself at how easy it is to make that judgment when you are dealing with just these overall very, very simple shapes. Now the next part of the bird that I want to look at is this tail here. And again, I'm going to make that an oval. And what I can see is that that oval there, so the length of that oval and you know the width as well, but certainly the length of that oval is very similar to the length of this one. Again, it doesn't have to be precise, not for an animal study. There we go, get that one in as well. Now from here you could move on to the wings, but I'm just going to put the branch in, just the shape of the branch, just so I can get a feel for you know, how the overall thing fits onto the paper. If I'm too far to the right, too far to the left, I want to move things, it's very easy to erase that at this stage and start again before I've put any detail in. So let's just put this uh, branch in, just again looking at the angle. We can maybe look at the line of the head and how that relates to the branch. So the line of the head is down here, this branch is going to be somewhere around here similar kind of an angle, bit of a flatter curve, that's about as much as I can fit on. And what I can do is just look at roughly at this sort of negative shape here, how does that compare? At this stage it's only got to be very very rough and I think that's okay. Now let's look at the top of the pose, so the top edge of the wing. And you can see that if I draw a line along that, that it is parallel to the picture plane, so it's running perfectly horizontal across. So look at where that is in relation to the head, so it's above the head, isn't it, above the top of the head. Again, look how I'm holding the pencil, really right down the length of the pencil, makes it much easier that I can move my whole arm from the shoulder, I can get this nice straight line. Try doing that with your fingers down here, you've got to move your wrist, it makes it much more difficult. Okay, now I want to get the length of this wing, so the distance from here, the tip of the wing here, to the front of the wing, this distance here. So the way that I can do that is just to take a plumb line down, and I can see that that is matching the end of the tail. Now if it didn't, if it was a bit further down, that's fine. If it was a bit further this way, that's fine. Using this plumb line just gives you a reference point relative to the other parts of the bird as to where it falls. Now straight away you can probably see I'm going to struggle then to get this back wing on the edge. It's probably just about going to fit on the edge there, going to be a little bit cramped. So what I can do is just make a simple adjustment. I can just reduce the size of this oval and then I can reduce the size of this one so that it finishes here. Let's just tidy that up and then obviously the head then, do I feel that needs to be a bit smaller? Just get rid of some of those outer lines there. And now we can say that the, this top wing finishes here, so this point here. And that allows us to probably just about fit on this back wing. So how do we find the length of this? Well, as with the previous study, we can look at an angle with something else. So I can take an angle to this bottom, uh, this bottom tail piece here. So looking at that angle there, just about fits on. So we can see that that's going to give us the length there and now we can put in this top edge of this wing which if you take the line up runs through the head and you can see the angle of that so it's going to be somewhere around there. So again we're left with these really messy construction marks but a really good uh, blueprint and foundation to continue the drawing. So this time let's just tidy things up a little bit. So I'm just going to get rid of the these big angles that we've put through. Okay, so now I can start looking at more big basic shapes. So this top wing here is a triangle. It's got a bit of an angle to it there. Got a, a straight line here, so I'm looking at an angle here, a bit of a straight line, and then an angle here. And we've got this piece here. Let's just put that in as a sphere and that goes into that nicely, so this line here and then I've got this piece that comes off, so I'm just looking at that angle there and it's slightly off the vertical, so it's not straight down, it's just slightly off the vertical and then that runs into the head, 
This is maybe a little bit shorter. So I'm looking at this shape here and comparing it to this shape. And I feel that mine is a bit too long and thin. So let's just adjust that now before we put too much more detail in. So we've got this curved shape here, that sphere, move it back slightly. That's gonna change the position of the head, but that's okay. These basic shapes are about making a start so you can build the drawing around them. They're not about placing them down and being absolutely rigid around them. Okay, so with this shape in place, I can now start looking at this bottom edge of the tail. So I can look at the angle. That's quite a steep angle, isn't it? So we can just check the severity of that. It's a little bit steeper than what I've got it. So not drawing in any individual feathers or anything of that nature. Just looking at this as a shape here. I'm trying to recreate that shape. And then the body, so look at this little angle here. So this little angle here, if you take a plumb line, where is that in, in relation to something else? So it's right touching the edge of the top wing. So that is in about the right position. So we can put in a basic shape for the leg. And there's the bat leg coming in there. We've got the claw in, let's just put that in very, very loosely for now. Put this one in. Put the width of the branch in. And with each mark that you put in, with each shape, part of the bird that you put in, every subsequent one becomes that much easier. There we go, and now we can put the head in, so I can look at this nice little bit of negative space, this little triangle space that's created with the upper wing. I'm looking at the angle of the head. I'm still seeing the oval underneath, so it is still working for me. For the beak, let's just put that in as a big triangle for now. So all I'm doing is looking at this as a triangle like this shape, and then I can cut the end off and that'll give me the beak shape. So I have an angle there, an angle down here, and then you can cut the end off. It's gonna be easy for me to fill that in. So let's get the position of the eye correct. So just looking how it compares to the beak. It's got the black of the eye and then these outer markings. And then with that triangle in place, that triangle with a bit chopped off the end, it's really simple for me to put the top of the beak in. And the bottom. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna go over this with the dark pencil, the 7B, 8B pencil. I'm gonna erase everything back, just so this one's a little bit cleaner for you to see. And then when I've done that, we'll add a little bit of shading again, just to, uh, just to create a bit of context for the overall, the overall animal. You can spend more time on it if you want to. So you can see I'm using broken lines here as well. So I'm not just trying to outline everything, I'm trying to give an indication as quick and as loose as this is, just give a little bit of an indication that it's you know, a feathered edge rather than just a solid line. A neatened up version there of the outline with quite heavy marks, much heavier than you would use if you're gonna progress this to uh, you know, a painting or even a pencil drawing. You wouldn't go this heavy. You don't want it to be outlined this much, but hopefully at least it shows up quite clearly. So all I'm gonna do then is add a little bit of uh, simple shading. Again, we'll speed things up you can spend as much time on this as you want to. I'm just gonna be looking for the basic shadow shapes, just adding a little bit of texture in. I'm sure you'll do it a lot more justice than I will by spending more time on the shading process. Hopefully that's shown you a different technique, a different approach to drawing an animal, or indeed you can apply this basic shapes method to any subject matter, it works for anything. Practice it with this, practice it with some of the other animal studies if you want to maybe have a go at that gazelle but using basic shapes, that would be a great idea. So have a go at that one. When you finish that and you're happy with it, move on to the next lesson and I'll see you there. Next up, let's have a go at sketching this big gentle giant. Different pose, this one coming straight towards us as opposed to side on and quite a tall and quite a slim composition. 
I think the mistake that you would see a lot of people make here is to make it too short and too wide because that's what we think about when we think about an elephant. We don't think about thing, uh, an elephant being tall and slim. Straight away, you might be looking at this and thinking I could draw a nice big rectangle around this. That's gonna give me, and use the angle to give me the height relative to the width, and by all means, you could do. I'm gonna take a different approach. I'm gonna to stick to basic shapes. I just feel that's a little bit more flexible, particularly if you're working, say, from life. So the first basic shape that I'm gonna look at is an oval, so that trusted oval that I always rely on, that's gonna incorporate the head and the ears, because I can see a natural oval within that. So it makes sense for me to put that one in. So the oval shape is this sort of shape. So it's maybe a little bit wider and deeper than an egg. But the point is, it's not a circle, a sphere. It's not that kind of an oval. It's not a really flat oval. It's got a definite shape to it. And that's what you should be looking for and looking to recreate it. Whatever the size it is, that's what you're trying to recreate. Let's get rid of those just to neaten things up. Now the next oval I want to look at is the oval that makes up this head here, or this part of the head here. I'm gonna take it down to the same level, bottom of the ears. I'll just put those markers in so you can see what I'm looking at. Now how does this oval differ in shape to this one? Obviously it's gonna be a lot taller and a lot thinner. But what I'm looking for specifically is the distance here, here, and here. So if we just imagine drawing an oval around there, if I draw a line up and I'll take it right through to the white of the paper. So there's the width there, and there's the width there. You can see that this is the biggest width, and these two widths are smaller, maybe, maybe a little bit more than half of the width of this. So if we see where I'm up to on mine. So I would say, looking at that, I probably need to go a little bit wider with this sphere. A little bit wider. So something more like that. Only a touch. And again, you don't need to be exact. You know, this has only got to be approximate for animal studies. It's the great thing about them. Now let's get the overall length of the body. So this means getting the length of the legs in. And what I want you to do is just to look at where the center of this main foot is. Because I think there would be a tendency to just assume that this is in the middle of the head. And if I draw a plumb line that goes through the middle of the head, you can see that the foot is over to the left. And that's really important because it's telling us a lot about the pose. It's telling us a lot about the gesture of the animal. So taking a plumb line up to there, I can see that it's somewhere around here, so it just still cuts through the head, but it's gonna be somewhere on this axis here. But I need to find the overall length. So what we can do, as we've done before, is go back and look at our angles. So I can look at that angle there and recreate it. So that angle from the outside of the head, let's put it in first. Don't be precious about getting it precise first time. Put your angle in and then measure. So I think it needs to be quite a bit steeper, or certainly steeper than what I've got it. So I'm looking at this point here in the middle of the foot. I'm looking at the angle from the outer, the most outer edge of the elephant. That angle there is probably more like that there. Okay, and then if I take an angle to this here, What I've got is what looks like a lopsided ice cream cone. And it should be lopsided. I don't want it to be symmetrical. This angle, these two angles here shouldn't be the same because the foot is off to one side. So this angle is definitely a flatter angle than this one. Hopefully you can see that. Now just as a good check, what I can do is just mentally see across from the bottom of the foot there. And I can see that this distance here is slightly more than this distance here. So am I right with that? Let's take that up. Okay, so this distance here is quite a bit more than this distance. So it may be that this is a little bit too long. It may be that that angle I put in initially was more correct. So let's just go somewhere in between, go somewhere around there, and I think that'll be good enough. Okay, so I'm just gonna get rid of these lines here all these marks that I'm just putting in for, for your benefit so you can see what I'm seeing. 
Now from here, I'd feel comfortable starting to put in the individual contours, maybe starting at the head and working my way down. But you might feel that you want to put in a few more shapes. One of the obvious shapes to put in would be for the body. So what I'm doing here is I'm just seeing how that shape would look if the head was moved to one side and we were drawing in an oval for the overall body there. Where would it break into the elephant's head? How does it come around? What is the overall size to this shape? It's probably not far off the same size as this, same volume, but a slightly different shape, so a more spherical shape. So let's get a feel for that. So it's coming in somewhere halfway between. So it's going to be something around that sort of shape. So that's one that you could put in. And then you might want to put in some basic cylinders for the legs. So not forgetting that this is our center of our bottom of our leg here. So this one is more here. And then you could put one in for this side. And then for the back leg. So overall, the important thing is my sketch is bigger than the reference. I could have gone a bit bigger again, plenty of room to do that. The most important thing is that your sketch is bigger than your reference photograph. If you do it size for size, that is easier, and that's fine to do that, but as a, an exercise in improving your observation, improving your drawing skills, I do want you to try and make your, your sketch bigger than the reference. I'm gonna leave that in place, and I'm gonna go straight into the uh, 7B, and I'm just going to draw the contour lines straight from where the marks that I've got down. And when you get to this particular study, when you're at this stage, why not do the same? So don't start putting in contours and erasing things and then putting in contours with the lighter pencil and erasing them again. Have the confidence to go straight in with the darker pencil and just see, I think you'll surprise yourself, just see and feel how easy it is to actually put these lines in while you've got these very, very rough basic shapes in. The other thing as well that you may have picked up, and it's a tip that I've given in a number of other different classes, is to break things, break curves down into straight lines. So you can see how these are a series of straight lines as opposed to me trying to draw nice neat curves. It's much easier to see these straight lines than it is to see uh, curves that have got a lot of subtlety to them. Very difficult to judge. So you can see there, I just did a basic circle shape for the end of the trunk. I wanna get the position first before I start putting contours in. I can see then how it curves around. I can see how the position relates to the legs. It needs to be further over. Look at that. So this trunk needs to be further over here. And the way that I spotted that is by looking at this sort of negative space here, as opposed to looking at the trunk. I'm looking at the space here, and I'm just seeing how that shape there is different to mine. It's got more of an angle to it. So no problem. I just erase. Use a bit more of a robust eraser when you're using a 7B pencil. And at this stage, it's an easy adjustment to make because I haven't put any detail in. So this needs to be here. There we go. And then I can start looking at the outer edge of the torso. I can look at a plumb line. If I draw a plumb line down there, does this touch that plumb line? No, it doesn't, so I can either take the ear further out or this needs to be a little bit further in. Let's look at the distance here to here. I think that's about right. I've got the leg coming down, so now I can look at this shape, this shape here. I can look at the shape it makes with the trunk. So I'm just looking at the levels there of the feet so I can see that this one is on this level, this one here, and this one somewhere in between. 
okay and then let's put the all important tusks in so let's just get a level first and just see if there's an angle between the two no they're pretty much straight across so I can look at this negative space here just to get this edge of the tusk in got this piece coming out here on the side of the trunk Okay, I'm just going to draw a sphere in there and then that helps me then build from the bottom of that sphere so it's as though it's a cross section through the trunk and I can look how it comes up same level as this one for the eyes just look at the basic shape of them so I can see there's a straight line at the bottom and it's that sort of an angle and then it's just this semicircular shape and then you've got these eyebrows or creases above the eyes that look like eyebrows and that gives it a really uh, that distinctive look okay and with that in place we can add a little bit of shading now it's quite a lot of strong shadows on this so it's a nice one to shade this is going to be the nicest one for you to do we can do this really quickly so look at all this shadow here this is all in shadow 